I'm going to show you the essential add-ons I always turn on when using a new version of Blender. To start, we're going to go to Edit Preferences, and under Add-ons, I'm going to type Node Wrangler. With this checked on, it's going to add a few options for us when we're dealing with node graphs. So for example, a shader node graph. I'm going to create something like a noise texture. And what Node Wrangler allows us to do is if I select this, this node and I hit Control plus T, it auto places a texture coordinate and mapping node, which is super useful. So if I don't want to use generated coordinates, I could use the UV coordinates. I could use something like a window coordinate as well. I'm going to just make this a little bigger so we can see what is going on. Another command I always use with Node Wrangler is Alt-S. And to show you how this is done, I'm going to quickly add a node and I'm going to add a value. And here we go. We have two nodes that go into this divide node or this math node. And if I want to swap those values, I kind of have to re-drag those lines. But with Node Wrangler enabled, if you select a node and press Alt-S, it'll automatically swap those values without you having to do anything. The third command I always use with Node Wrangler is Control, Shift, and Click. So if this wasn't connected and I wanted to quickly connect this to the surface or to the main output of the material, I could just hit Control plus Shift and click, and that automatically places it where I want it to be. One nice thing about using this is let's say I have a big shader graph here and there's lots of values going on and I want to see what individual parts of the shader graph are doing. I can just do control plus shift and click here and this will output exactly what's showing from this node. And then when I'm ready to see the full shader, I can click this again on the principal BSTF and have our final shader. The next add-on I always add is called F2. It's a very simple thing, but it's very helpful. So for example, if I were to be doing something like retopology, and if I want to make a new polygon right here with a point over here, typically you'd take something like this, extrude it, and then you could press F to fill that in. But with mesh F2 added, if I were to just select this one point right here, and then I just press F, and then I can right click, it automatically places this polygon exactly where it needs to be. And it makes things much quicker when doing things like read topology. Another example where the F2 add-on is super useful is if you have a geometry kind of like this. Maybe you had it perfect before, but you by mistake deleted some of it. But now you want to get this polygon back in the correct position, you know, or you want to have this one back. So again, I could just click this, press F, and, and right click and it automatically fills it in exactly where it should be and I can get that geometry exactly how I want it. The next one is the Rigify plugin. This allows you to create humanoid rigs really easily that can have things such as facial expression or easy controls to control and animate your character. So for example with this Astro Boy character that I modeled I can easily pose it and it adds nice IK features and things like stretching if you want. These are all tweakable and you can just create something much quicker than you would if you were doing it from scratch. Once the Rigify add-on is enabled under Shift A, you'll have three new options. I generally just use the human meta rig. Sometimes I even sculpt characters based on these proportions and obviously you can tweak these. And once you have a mesh, you align these bones to that mesh and then you can click generate rig and Rigify will automatically create you this, this great way to pose and utilize your rig. The next add-on is Loop Tools. When that's enabled, and let's say you have a shape that you want to be somewhat circular, but for some reason, maybe you sculpted it, maybe you're modeling it, it's just not really perfect. If I were to go into edit mode, and I'll actually just delete a few faces real quick, and let's say I wanted this loop to be perfectly circle, circular. If I were to right click, now we have this new loop tools menu and I can click circle and it'll turn it into a perfect circle, which then I could use for something like a neck or a head. In general, this is a tool I use a lot specifically for that, for necks and arms. And that's pretty much all I use it for. I know there's some other things like relax or flatten, which could be useful, but 
that's kind of like the general reason I use this tool. And the last essential add-on that I always add, and it's the only paid add-on that I actually use in Blender, is Exodize Quad Remesher. So this is actually coded and made by the same engineer that made the Z Remesher add-on in, in ZBrush. And it does an extremely good job of doing retopology automatically in Blender. So if you were to pay for this tool, you could then download it type your email, go into edit preferences, and install, and add the zip that you downloaded. Now you have quad remesh available on the right hand side if you press N, and you can select a mesh, and perhaps you have super high poly or just quad flow that does not look good, and with quad remesher you can choose what quad count you'd like, click remesh it, you'll see a process on the bottom, and it will then give you a really nicely retopologized mesh. If you found this video helpful, please drop a subscription and a like. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much.